Florida, North Carolina bans Coca-Cola. To decrease crime, let's stop building prisons. FB bans Trump for two years, and a volleyball player sues Oklahoma. This is the June 11th, 2021 report. Welcome to the Brief News Brief podcast, where a busy Christian can get caught up on a week's worth of news in 15 minutes or less without opinion and much bias. I'm your host, Isaac Lopez, and this is the Brief News Brief presented by the by TLG Radio. Stick around for the brief breakdown, where we will discuss politics and activism um, and how those become blurred in light of the North Carolina Coca-Cola controversy. That is also where you can obtain bias and opinion. <laughs> But before we get to that, I would like to explain why we do what we do. This is, I believe, now the 94th episode of this podcast and has been running for well over a year and a half. We've changed a lot of things up in recent uh, memory, and it is for the express purpose of combating the knee-jerk reactionism that we see in today's media, whether it's journalists or reporters typing headlines that are not entirely true or people not completely reading reports and just reading what they want to read, we title our the podcast The Brief News Brief and only put in the report date and then a brief breakdown to let you know that there is something coming at the end. But I do not get into um, just week-to-week hot topic stories. Now, there is a place to to discuss what is trending to not be left behind, and there is an element for that in today's uh, society for discussion like that. But for the purpose of this podcast, the goal is once again to encourage a year-round interest in current events so that way we aren't surprised or caught off every four years with the state of the country. And that is the express purpose of this podcast is to continue to develop an interest in current events that doesn't leave you burnt out and actually, hopefully, encourages you to do digging on your own. These reports are very short and not very long, and they, the goal is to give you the facts about a story and nothing much beyond that. And the, the hope is that if you are interested in this stor- a story that you'd follow the link Uh, to the research in the description that is included with every episode to take advantage of some of the stories and then do your digging beyond that. Do your own digging beyond that. So I just want to come back and reiterate why we do what we do because the titles aren't exactly uh, intended to be the most catchy. And that's kind of uh, counterintuitive for uh, a podcast, but that's that's how we uh, that's how I like to roll, and I think that's what you all, as the listeners, long term, long time listeners, have enjoyed. Okay, without further ado, let's jump into the reporting part of this podcast. In politics, Facebook is set to announce the termination of a ban that allowed politicians to be exempt from certain community standards because they were deemed newsworthy. The May Jobs report showed that employers added 559,000 new jobs last month, with unemployment dropping to 5.8%. There is still a significant fear, though, that it will be a while before we reach the low unemployment rate that we had prior to COVID-19. Politics and activism collide again as county commissioners vote to ban Coca-Cola vending machines from government offices, citing that the company has gone too far left. Stick around for the brief breakdown where we will get into discussing that. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez recommended that the way to stop crime was to stop building prisons and begin investing in our communities. Quote, if we want to reduce the number of people in our jails, the answer is to stop building more of them. It's to support communities, not throw them away. She continued, our complete gutting of support in our mental health system, both in this city and across the world, across the country rather, is absolutely correlated with both homelessness and incidents of violent crime. It is not acceptable acceptable for us to use jails 
as garbage bins for human beings. We need to treat people and see them as human. There are mixed reports regarding Biden's massive infrastructure deal, but it has come to a standstill in the Senate as both sides, Democrats and Republicans, continue to pu push for adjustments and deals to be made. In other news, Republicans flipped the border city of McAllen, Texas, as a GOP mayor was voted by a margin of just 200-some votes. This town has trended strongly Democratic in recent elections. President Biden's DOJ continues to defend President Trump in a decades-old case, which accuses Donald Trump of raping E. Jean Carroll somewhere between the years 1995 and 1996. And finally, a new bipartisan legislation was introduced in the House of Representatives to combat big tech. CNN reports, quote, if successful, the legislation could force Google to stop promoting YouTube and its search results or prohibit Amazon from selling products on its marketplace that compete directly with third-party seller listings. Apple could be required to last, lack, relax its restrictions on iOS app developers, and Facebook could be banned from acquiring nascent companies for the purpose of stifling future rivals. On to culture. Journalist Andy DeJau said that he was chased through the streets of Portland, Oregon while covering the riots taking place there. And he ended up being assaulted. And I quote, no journalist in America should ever face violence for doing his or her job, he said. Yet, on Friday, May 28th, Antifa tried to kill me again while I was reporting on the ongoing protests and riots in Portland, Oregon, for a new chapter of my book, Unmasked, inside Antifa's radical plan to destroy democracy. I was chased, attacked, and beaten by a masked mob, baying for my blood. Had I not been able to shelter wounded and bleeding inside a hospital while they beat the doors and windows like animals, there is no doubt in my mind that I would not be here today. Former President Trump has been banned from Facebook for the next two years, according to the New York Times. The Justice Department tried to obtain four New York Times reporters' emails to identify some of their sources. President Biden continued this effort after President Trump tried a similar stunt. Following Twitter deleting a post made by President Mohamedou Buhari, Nigeria banned access to the social media app beginning on the 12th of June. Our members, and I quote, received formal instruction from the Nigerian Communications Commission, the industry regulator, to suspend access to Twitter. And the executive secretary of the Association of Licensed Telecommunication Operations of Nigeria told Newsmax, we are only following the directive of the government as we are licenses, licensees of the government. And finally, this report from The Blaze, for the third straight night, Protests erupted in Minneapolis as demonstrators reacted to the shooting death of a man by law enforcement that happened on Thursday afternoon. Members of the U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force attempted to arrest Winston Boogie Smith, who was wanted on a state arrest warrant for being, for being a felon in possess, possession of a firearm. When law enforcement tried to take Smith into custody on the top level of a parking ramp in the uptown neighborhood, he allegedly produced a handgun and fired shots from inside his vehicle at the officers, according to officials. U.S. Marshals returned fire and struck Smith, 32, who was pronounced dead at the scene. A 27-year-old female passenger in the vehicle was transported to the Hennepin, Hennepin County Medical Center for treatment of glass injuries sustained from the shooting and was released. On to sports, Kylie McLaughlin, a former star player for the volleyball team at the University of Oklahoma, is now suing her former coaches for violating her freedom of speech, amongst other things. After expressing her disagreement with the slant of a required documentary that covered the topics of racism in the U.S. following the George Floyd shooting, she received backlash from the coaching staff. The suit says McLaughlin was told she did not fit the culture of the program and they could not trust her based on comments she had made according to teammates in the past. 
and she was given an ultimatum. The suit says she had three choices. Keep one, keep her scholarship, red shirt, practice only with the coach and not the team, and receive diversity training. Two, keep her scholarship and just be a student. Three, transfer to another college with only two weeks left before volleyball season started for fall semester. Head coach of the Washington football team, Ron Rivera, admits that he might have been wrong in his handling of the former Washington football team QB, Dwayne Haskins. And I quote, the mistake I made was my approach was wrong. I should have made a, as big a competition as possible, and that's on me. I wanted to try and find a guy. I thought Haskins was ready to take a step and take every opportunity. I tried to build that rapport he needed with his teammates, and that would have been something we may have been able to see sooner and could have done something different, perhaps. Yesterday, a subcommittee of the NCAA recommended that they expand the football playoffs from the current four to an expanded 12 spots. One senator sees a problem with this and sounded off. The only guaranteed outcome of an expanded playoff field and a longer season is more league profit that the players won't see a dime of. It's just another cash grab. I doubt if the fact that this will increase the risk of player injury even came up. And finally, Arizona quarterback Kyler Murray recently mentioned that football isn't the only sport on his mind. I quote, I still hold on to the three-sport title. If the time came when I got to do what I wanted to do, which I don't know, but I'm leaving it open, I think I could still play for sure, but we'll add the electronic gaming onto that. Don't shortchange me, please. <laughs> On to health. Dr. Rochelle Walensky, director of the CDC, encourages parents to vaccinate their teens, saying that, I am deeply concerned by the number of hospitalized adolescents and sad to see the numbers of adolescents who require treatment in intensive care units or mechanical ventilation. The FDA has approved a new drug that will help combat the disease Alzheimer's. Since three of the board members advising on this drug have resigned in protest. This report from the Blaze Alameda County, a northern California county that includes the city of Oakland, has revised its COVID-19 data methodology, re which results in a massive 25% decrease in its reported COVID-19 deaths. According to CBS News, the Biden administration bought 500 million of Pfizer's vaccines to donate to the Global Fund. Global Supply. This last Tuesday in Kentucky, a circuit county judge issued a permanent injunction against all of Governor Andy Bashar's, Bashir's COVID restrictions, including the mask mandate. And finally, some good news. Footage surfaced, surfaced over Memorial Weekend showing a woman shoving a bear off the top of her fence. In the video, it makes several swipes at her dogs, but she rushes over and pushed off the fence and hurried her pets to safety indoors. A federal judge in California overturned the 32-year ban of assault weapons. The judge, Benitez, like the, said, like the Swiss Army knife, the popular AR-15 is a perfect combination of home defense weapon and homeland defense equipment. Firearms deemed as assault weapons are fairly ordinary popular modern rifles. And finally, the last story on this report, a Virginian judge reinstates the uh, physical education Christian teacher, Tanner Cross. This followed on the heels of Tanner Cross voicing his disagreement of the new pronoun policies that were being put in place by the county school district. <laughs> Now, if you have enjoyed listening to the Brief News Brief podcast, feel free to give TLG Radio a follow wherever you get your podcast or wherever you find the Life Given Radio. If you would be so kind, feel free to leave a five-star review or follow us wherever you are. If you are interested in more of this content and following along with the Brief News Brief and updates like this, Go follow the Life Given Radio on Instagram or the Life Given Network on Facebook. We're going undergoing some rebranding and some repurposing as we grow this to become more suited to what the initial vision was. 
a lot of exciting changes coming down the pike this summer. So keep your eyes open for that. If you'd like to email me a tip or would just like to talk to me about my show, either join the Life Given Radio face, uh, uh, Conversation Facebook group. It's You can find it linked to the community tab on the Life Given Network Facebook page. Or, if you'd like a more direct way of contacting me, email me at thebriefnewsbrief at gmail.com. Remember who the real enemy is, Ephesians 6, 12. God bless, and I will speak with you either in a few minutes for the brief breakdown or next Friday. Welcome to The Brief Breakdown, where you get some opinion and a little bit of bias. Uh, Really, I want to focus in on the North Carolina uh, Coca-Cola controversy. It's very easy to see how lines blur. But let's read a part of this report from The Blaze. What what we're do here in this segment is focus on one particular story and actually read part of the report, whether it's three paragraphs or two pages. Not many people understand context these days, and so we're trying to encourage doing more digging and reading the story in context. So this is uh, following the report um, that I just shared earlier in the brief news brief. According to a May 28th report from WXII-TV, the move came in a 3-2 vote and was presented in response to Coca-Cola's blatant criticism of Georgia's voting reform legislation. Following the state's announcement of its new voting laws, Coca-Cola CEO James Quincy said in a statement, Our focus is now on supporting federal legislation that protects voting access and addresses voter suppression across the country. We all have a duty to protect everyone's right to vote, and we will continue to stand up for what is right in Georgia and across the U.S. County Commissioner Eddie Harris, the county's longest-serving commissioner, said in an official statement, The left wing in America, they defund, they boycott, they cancel, they tear down statutes, statutes, all sorts of egregious activities. The expectation from them is the opposing political side will cower in the corner, and we're supposed to accept that. It's uh, supposed to be okay, and it's not okay, end quote. So just, just a part of that report. And once again, you can find this in the document with all of the research, and that's linked very easily accessible in the show description under this podcast. The thing that I really want to get at here is how quickly lines blur between politics and activism. There isn't that much room separating them, and oftentimes our politics are guided by our activism and really our first principles and beliefs. And... Sometimes people think that that sounds crazy, but it's really easy um, to, here, let me, let me rewind on that. It's really easy for people to think that it's very easy to segment, to segregate your beliefs from the actual actions that are taken within politics and within legislation. But I think a story like this shows just how easily it's for one side to be motivated by their beliefs. And there's nothing necessary, necessarily wrong with that. All I would like to point out with this is that you cannot segregate politics from the rest of your lives and vice versa. One of the things that drives forward this podcast is the idea that all of this life is to be engaged with. And so all year round, we engage with politics. We are not going to sit around for three years and then every fourth year during the election cycle, we get up in arms over every minute thing. We try to uncover stories here that matter to you, the listener, and that actually matter in general. And things that can sharpen you and can prepare you for what's coming down the road. That is all I'm trying to say is that it is not something that you put on the shelf. Politics and current events are not something you put on the shelf for four years. It, it uh, requires of us active engagement and constant engagement. That being said, it does not require your full attention for 40 hours a week. So that's why you have this podcast. So in this brief breakdown ended up being a pitch for this podcast, but that's the goal for the brief breakdown is to just build continued interest.
in politics to show that it is not easy to segregate politics, activism, and your beliefs from the rest of your life or from each other. In conclusion, remember who the real enemy is in Ephesians 6.12. God bless. I will speak with you next Friday. Thank you.